Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So I'm back with a look at another component of this new SRE NE off-grid system. Um, if you missed it, I've got two videos out so far, kind of a sneak peek at all the, the things I'll be looking at. And I've done one video on the 30 amp DC to DC charger converter recently. So this time I'm gonna get a look at kind of the heart of the system here the big uh, inverter charger transfer switch. So this is a 3000 watt inverter, pure sine wave inverter. It's got a 120 uh, amp battery charger in it and a 50 amp transfer switch. So we'll get a look at it. I'll hook it up and we'll, we'll show you it actually running and then I'll go through its uh, app in detail. So let's go. Okay, here's my test setup. I have a generator. It's going to be my grid power coming in. And then I have, this is my battery power. It's a lithium battery. So the battery is hooked up red to positive, black to negative, to negative. And I just have a fuse in there for safety. So there's the two hookups for the DC power. And then on the AC side, I have the cord coming from the generator into the input there. And then we have two outputs. One output is the inverter output, and it's going and it's charging. It's going to a charger in there as a load. And then the second output, the bypass output, is just going, and I just have these lights to, to show it's on. So I'll give you a look at the app here. And you can follow the arrows there. AC in is coming from the generator. And then we've got Right now it's charging. I have it set for 5 amps, just 5 amps of charging. One of the AC outputs is going to the battery charger, and that is uh, 418 watts. And then the other one is the one that's lighting those lights up. Other things we have here, we have a BTS, is battery temperature sensor. So that could be a, a temperature sensor for lithium. You could have the charger cut off at higher low temperatures and also a temperature sensor for lead acid so they would adjust the voltage for different charging levels depending on how cold it gets. There's actually battery voltage sensor and with that you could run wires to the battery and, and get a gauge of what exactly the voltage is at the battery. Say you were you had a really long run of wires and there's quite a bit of voltage drop across the wires, you would you would get better charging because the charger would know exactly what the battery voltage was at the battery. You wouldn't have to count on measuring it here. Down here we have another set of uh, connectors and there's a starter battery plus and minus so it can trickle charge a starter battery from that as well. And then we have a remote on off switch here that you can use for remote on off. And then there's some RS485 and TTL outputs for connecting to uh, batteries or, or uh, communications hubs and that sort of thing. Anyway, right now we're in full mode where we're doing inverter power and we're plugged into grid. Now I'm going to unplug the grid and I'll show you what will happen. Okay, so let's just go turn the generator off and we'll see what happens to this. It should switch into just inverting mode. Right now it's charging the battery, so it should stop charging the battery and uh, start pulling out of the battery to keep doing the AC1 out load and the AC out 2 load, which is the bypass from the mains or grid power should turn off. There we go. So you can see the lights went out here because there's no longer bypassing, but the inverter switched over and it's providing power to the AC out one, and that's what I have hooked up to that battery charger. So now you can see power's coming out of the battery. So we'll go and uh, 
switch that again just like we were plugging in main power there we go so now you see it's switched we're charging and uh, the generator is providing power and then I right now I have this set to come on in 60 seconds I'll show you in a minute I'll go through all the app and show you the, the different settings in there but uh, this would be good if you wanted to only run something when you're on grid power like air conditioning or water heaters that sort of thing you would have them set to hooked up to this so your inverter would run things that you normally would want to run off grid and then a lot of the other high wattage stuff would be on AC power too. At least that's what I'm going to do on the boat. The boat has a, an electric water heater. I'm not going to run off the batteries. So I will be bypassing using that. A few other things that I, that I run only on shore power. There we go. So 60 seconds and that turned on. And we're back to this. Cool, everything seems to be working as it's supposed to. Let's go inside and we'll go through all the app settings in here for you, give you a look at that. Okay, so we're looking at the real-time screen. Gives you all the information that's going on. There's also a history screen. So after it's been used for a number of days, stuff will be populated here and you can look at data as far as energy use and charging, that sort of thing. Basic info, we've got the model number, serial number, version number, that sort of thing, and a factory reset. And then up here is the gear icon. That's where you do all the settings in drop down. So there's inverter. You can set the voltage or the, the cycles per second, 60 or 50. Let's see what you can set voltage from 100 to 120. Eco mode um, means uh, the power will start when it sees 30 watts or more. So it's kind of an ener energy saving thing. But if you're running very small loads off it, you don't want that on or, or you know, it'll be off and your little small loads won't be running. And then it's got eco interval 60 seconds. Ground relay. So I think that's so the, the neutral bond, neutral ground bond can be on or off. You have a choice there. Charging and battery. So I'm set for lithium, but you can set the other types of batteries here and a user defined as well. But in the lithium, you can do your charge current from five all the way to 120 amps. Nominal capacity to enter the, the battery bank you're using. Boost charge voltage, you can set that. Lithium 14.4 is a good one for most lithium batteries. Over discharge recovery voltage says 12.6. Over discharge voltage 11.1. Boost charge time 120 minutes. I think that's once it's reached 14.4, you can decide how long you want it to hold that voltage at. Full cutoff current amps 1. Zero degree no charge of lithium so that's if you hook up a temperature sensor you can have it protect your batteries by not charging below freezing and then lower limit of charge in celsius as well so that's kind of cool so you have some settings to protect your lithium batteries from freezing weather ac input I have mine set to 30 amps because my boat and RV uses 30 amps but you can go all the way up to 50 amps bypass output and mains charging that's what we're in right now but you can also have just bypass output and then it isn't charging through the the grid power ac output priority for mains electricity or in inverter priority output switching voltage so if it drops below a certain voltage then it will give priority to the grid coming in um, if it's above a certain voltage then the inverter will take priority 
So that'd be a good setup if you're trying to save power from the grid and you have lots of solar power or something. So you'd rather be using that versus paying for electricity. At least that's the way I understand that. And then we've got uh, AC2 delay output time. I think the default is two minutes. I just lowered it to 60 seconds just for our test there. And then charge only mode. And other buzzer switch. Not exactly sure what that's for. Still learning all about this, this unit myself. And well, here we have more actions. Data calibration, inverter voltage, battery voltage, municipal electrical voltage, oh, the external battery voltage. Okay, so that's for calibrating it to make sure the, the inverter is exactly calibrated to the, the real voltages. Okay, so that's about it for now. Stay tuned, come spring we'll be doing an installation in the boat and um, we'll be some more, doing some more testing. Just wanted to give you kind of a sneak peek at this new inverter. It's not actually out to market yet and I'm not exactly sure of the price yet. They're sending me a price list for all this stuff but I thought while we're uh, finishing off our boondocking season I would kind of give you a sneak peek at all this equipment that's going to be installed and uh, reviewed this summer. Till next time, Ray from Lovey RV and Boat. Cheers, guys.